In this new global economic paradigm, investors and shareholders need to think differently. Very differently. Risk as we know it has moved to a completely different dimension. The black swan came to our lives with the 2009 crisis, and now with COVID-19, it has all but set up a permanent nest. All our futures are far from certain. As a CEO, if you do not navigate your business into a sustainable development world, you would be naive to think that you could get away with it. Those armed with the best intelligence are best equipped to deal with what is to come, even in these difficult times. The best intelligence is contingent on having the best tools. We don't know when the pandemic started and when it will end. Lots of lessons are to be learnt from this outbreak and one of them is very, very clear, even today. For companies, it means adhering to the strict principles of environmental, social and governance criteria, which has become a matter of survival. For investors, shareholders and all stakeholders, it means accurate assessment of how this is being done in terms of implementation and compliance. And now, there is a model. Welcome to the launch of South Africa's first Artificial Intelligence Sustainability Model, ESG GPS. This is a new world that is being built based on conscious leadership. So by having this information at your fingertips, it allows strategic leadership to become conscious. So it drives your reputation, it drives your brand, it drives your sustainability, and more importantly, it drives your bottom line. Stand by now for your host, one of the country's leading thinkers in entrepreneurship, Andy Lukumala. To those of you in South Africa and around the world, a warm welcome from a lockdown Johannesburg as we launch South Africa's first AI-developed sustainability model, ESG GPS. This is a rating model based on four years of data and analysis of all listings on the JSE. Now, as an entrepreneur myself, and one steeped in the belief of self-growth, I am proud to say that the ESG GPS rating model has been developed by young, data sciences from our very own country, South Africa. One of our partners in this launch is the Youth Start Foundation. And up front, let me announce that every single person and company that has registered for this launch has triggered an automatic 180 rand donation by Risk Insights to the Youth Start Foundation. Furthermore, Risk Insights has ceded 5% ownership of the ESG GPS to the foundation. It's a magnificent gesture deserving of all of our applause and is emblematic of a strong belief in young people making a difference to themselves. Before we start, please text or email any questions you might have during the course of this launch to info at riskinsights.co.za. I also need to pay tribute to our various partners in this venture. Singularity U South Africa, which aims to build an empowered network of globally connected change makers across the continent of Africa. We open this session with a view from Professor Edward Altman in New York. He's the Max Alheim Professor of Finance Emeritus at the Stern School of Business, New York University. He is the creator of the world famous Altman Z-Score model for bankruptcy prediction of companies globally. Hello to all of you and greetings from New York City. I am absolutely delighted and honored to be involved in the launch of Risk Insights new products and services in the environmental, social, and governance areas, the so-called ESG factors that are so important and increasingly so in dealing with companies and their sustainability. Over the years, I have grown to understand and to appreciate the environment, social, and governance attributes of companies. And this is why it's so interesting for me to be involved in this launch of Risk Insights. Indeed, I've been involved in ESG factors and other uh, related factors in four meaningful ways. First, 
Some of you may be familiar with the fact that I've been involved in building and developing models and techniques to understand better the prediction of financial health of companies and particularly if they are likely to go bankrupt or not. In doing so, I've grown to focus on and appreciate new techniques in addition to the original techniques that I use, mainly statistical ones, back in 1968 when I built the original Z-score model. Some of the new techniques that are particularly relevant to our discussion today deal with artificial intelligence and machine learning, both very powerful techniques in utilizing, assembling, grasping, and understanding so much data with respect to the E, S, and G attributes of companies. And these new techniques I found actually enhance the accuracy, value added, so to speak, of the models that I and others are building to this very day. Second, in a new venture that I started just three and a half years ago in London called Wiser Funding Limited, we co-founded the idea of analyzing and specifically emphasizing small and medium-sized firms. And what we found is, yes, you can help understand and predict a firm's health through looking at their financial data. But in addition, and very importantly, you can have value added to the models from looking at their social media uh, quotes uh, about their attributes, strengths and weaknesses, and particularly the governance factor, how the board of directors operates, the number of board members, diversity, independence, and so on. And so these factors have enhanced the accuracy of our SME, small and medium sized firm models. The third area that I've been involved with, with respect to ESG, is that I'm a member of the board of directors of an investment company in Germany, specializing only in picking companies with excellent ESG ratings and evaluations. And so a product like Risk Insights is talking about and presenting is very much helpful for an investment analyst like our employees. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I wish I could be with you today in person. Indeed, I wish I was in South Africa more frequently. But since I'm not, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference, of this uh, discussion, and I wish you, all of you, good luck in this new venture. Thank you very much. Professor Altman, thank you. Current thinking here is that ESGS criteria, which consists of alternatives, are becoming increasingly critical for large financiers and asset managers to assess their credit and valuation risk because it can help them filter out companies that may not be sustainable and may pose a financial risk due to their practice. Let's hear now from NetBank's Chief Financial Officer, Raisibe Murati. Good afternoon to all our webinar participants. I do hope that you are staying safe and doing all the responsible things as advised by our respective health professionals in an effort to fight COVID-19 pandemic. In the last few months, the word that I've heard more often than any other is unprecedented as it refers to COVID-19 pandemic. The word unprecedented is of particular relevance today as we are launching the ESG GPS for South Africa, the first on our shores and the first owned by a small company built and founded by women of color. This we can call unprecedented with great pride. On the 6th of February, I met with Anushka and her team and they took me through this great product that they developed seeking to track and report ESG in South African listed companies, and their intention was to launch in March. I knew during that time how important and relevant this project is. As we stand today, only a few weeks later, the world changed very fast, and it is now clear how strong the business case is for a business or product like this one. COVID-19 has changed everything about everything. It has remodeled many businesses and services, but most importantly, it has changed how we think about businesses, whether private enterprise 
or governments. COVID-19 has indicated to us that matters which were historically considered small and immaterial, and we have spoken about those many times, being environmental, social, and governance, are in fact far more important and urgent than we thought. The pandemic has also brought to light the materiality of ESG-related risks and the deep linkages between businesses and their stakeholders across the value chains. In our view, social risks are the most acute factors right now. Chief among them are health, safety, and workforce dynamics. There are both direct and financial consequences, but also less tangible indirect reputational effects to consider. Good governance during these troubling times is of critical importance and environmental performance remains key. At this launch, we are here to congratulate and endorse the product developed by Risk Insights as a thoughtful, relevant, and appropriate tool to track and measure ESG in South Africa with all its own idiosyncrasies. On the 25th of April, an article published in the Business Day indicated that COVID-19 may create an investor culture of care and responsibility, which admittedly the world requires. They observed that only a handful of companies listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange were signatories to the UN-backed principles of responsible investment. With this, we note the role played by our fellow African Kofi Annan in shaping the world with the concept of PRI, and that despite the agenda being owned and pushed by the UN, we are nevertheless still having to encourage and nudge each other that this is not a matter of choice, but it is an integrated thinking required in a sustainable business. Today's webinar is not about COVID-19. It is BC, the capital B and C. And I learned recently that anything that predates COVID-19 is referred to as BC before COVID. However, COVID is a clear and direct illustration of why this subject matter is critical. Through COVID-19, we observe how a health issue has impacted everything to a point of experiencing lockdowns with significant implications in our daily lives, good and bad. Through COVID-19, we experience how the bottom of the pyramid carries the largest burden on a combination of sickness, loss of jobs, impossibility and incapability to be responsive. And we have to immediately remind ourselves of the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And if you happen to be a target group in any of those goals, you will most likely suffer the most of COVID-19's repercussions. A few illustrations being SDG 1, poverty, SDG 2, hunger, 3, wealth and well-being, 4, quality education, 5, gender, 6, water, and many more. The point is COVID-19 would not have dire consequences if the SDGs were not addressing the real problems in our society. We should acknowledge a lot of work already underway, namely thoughtfulness of our governments in providing various stimulus packages to assist societies during these difficult times. The generosity of our communities and people having contributed billions of rents into a combination of the Solidarity Fund and the ENCA or HCI funds. Outside of recent COVID-19 events, companies like NetBank have committed to some decisive and firm policies that will enable tracking and reporting our financing and investment activities in climate change. We were the first South African commercial bank to launch South Africa's first green bond on the JSC in order to partner with like-minded investors to support PRI and on the other hand, to fund renewable energy projects. Several large companies have signed up and committed to SDGs, and we all must be hard at work to implement them. All these efforts are much appreciated. However, much more is required to still be done in nation building. Risk Insights has developed a tool based on top-notch mathematical brilliance, artificial intelligence tools, and deep local knowledge based on best practice, global insights, to make it easy for us as society to walk the talk and convert ideas to ESG into action. Without robust ESG principles and practices, I do not believe a business can claim to be resolute in building a sustainable enterprise which takes care of all the various stakeholders. Without tracking the actions, benchmarking and reporting independently, ESG cannot be meaningful 
and companies cannot be held accountable. This product brings all of that into perspective. In a message that Jamie Diamond recorded for their JP Morgan clients and published in April, he was quoted as saying, learn to expect the worst and prepare the best. I totally agree with that. With ESG, we need to expect that our terms of reference in the world is to fix problems so that we can add value to the lives of others. As we start this webinar, I would like to call upon all the participants to reset your mindset and goals about how we are all jointly going to change the world. I call upon you to think about how Risk Insights has made it so much easier for your business to engage with stakeholders on ESG and why it is also a catalyst for change. I wish to personally congratulate Anushka and her team for this excellent work and trust that their product will be of great use to companies and investors alike. The Risk Insights team has worked hard and as I know Anishka for many years, I am confident that this can only be the start. Keep rising and keep on changing the world. I thank you all and hope you enjoy the rest of the webinar. Raisibe, thank you very much. Before we get to our main presentation, I mentioned one of our partners in this launch is the Youth Start Foundation. I want to bring in very quickly Martin Sweet from the organization with a view on why youth development during this time is more important than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, our Youth Start Foundation is honored to announce its collaboration with the first proudly South African machine learning ESG sustainability rating model developed by Risk Insights. The COVID-19 pandemic has been yet another wake-up call for ESG compliance. And the rating model launched today provides the strategic guidance we need to create a sustainable future. According to a new global survey carried out by De Vere Group, some 77% of millennials cite ESG investing as their top priority when considering investment opportunities. It's thus no coincidence that the Youth Start Foundation, with its socially responsible national youth education programs, is collaborating with Risk Insights to strengthen the S in ESG. The accepted economic wisdom is that investments in education increase the talent in the labor pool, raise productivity, and boost economic growth and incomes. In fact, the first building block of true economic empowerment is a world-class education. The South African education system has placed far too little emphasis on relevant training in science, technology, engineering, and math, on technical and vocational education and training, as well as on higher order cognitive and analytical skills. This has resulted in a skills mismatch, with most job seekers lacking the skills that employers require. New Start Foundation recognizes the challenges faced by our education system, and as such, has specialized in national youth empowerment programs for high school learners for underserved communities. The existing edutainment programs include career guidance, financial literacy, matric maths and science revision, and entrepreneurship development. The focus of our intervention this year will primarily be targeted at supporting struggling matriculants in their preparation for their final examinations. In partnership with Youth Start Foundation, your return on investment includes recognition for socioeconomic development, provision of Section 18A, access to a talent pipeline, branding and media exposure, as well as staff volunteering opportunities, amongst others. To supplement and enhance this offering, we are launching an online virtual learning hub titled Star Tech, thereby going boldly where no education solution has gone before. It's up to us to create the change by making education a pivotal part of the COVID-19 response, helping South African youth develop the skills needed 
to participate more meaningfully in the economy. And this is critical to building a sustainable environment in which business can operate. While Youth Start Foundation may be the catalyst for these exciting and impactful programs, we cannot do it alone. If we are to succeed in achieving our long-term objectives, it's essential that we continue to partner with like-minded organizations such as Risk Insights who share our vision. We therefore invite co-investors to join our movement that will take learners on a journey from schoolroom to boardroom. To Dr. Anushka Bogdanov and the entire Risk Insights team, wish you all the best with your vital ESG model. Thank you and the viewers for all your wonderful support. Stay safe and be well. For Risk Insights, the development of their ESG GPS model has been a long time in the making. The process was driven by a team of young, talented South African data scientists under the tactical and inspirational leadership of Dr. Anushka Bogdanov. She is absolutely passionate about making positive changes by sustainable and responsible investments driven by the application of ESG principles in day-to-day -day risk management. Here now with the official global launch presentation of the ESG GPS sustainability model, Dr. Anushka Bogdanov. Thank you, Andile, and uh, welcome, everyone. And thank you very much for taking the time to wait for our ESG GPS uh, launch. And I can promise you it was well worth the wait. So don't blame me, blame it on COVID-19. So ESG GPS, it's about ensuring that the financial system, that is the asset managers and the banks, have a bespoke model that they are able to measure the environmental, the social and the governance aspects of a company for South Africa. So this is the first model in the world that is using machine learning and AI technology to be able to rate an entire stock exchange. 357 companies of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Yes, the entire stock exchange. It is a model that is bespoke to the country. It takes into account the laws of the land as well as the laws that govern the particular sector of a company in which it operates. So the ESG GPS model is not just a one size fits all. We want companies not just to go from good to great, but to be built to last. That's all about sustainability. So why would we need an ESG GPS model for South Africa? South Africa has a strong infrastructure. We have great laws a strong judicial system. We have a strong agricultural, mining and banking system and financial services sector. We are seen as the London of Africa, except that we have 360 days of sunshine. So what is ESG GPS going to create for South Africa? It's going to create conscious leadership and conscious companies. And through that conscious leadership and conscious companies, we're going to have a financial system that is going to be stronger than it ever was. We're going to be able to differentiate good credit from bad credit, good valuations from bad valuations, but more importantly, your retail investors, your trade unions, as well as your wholesale investors are going to be absolutely delighted with a strong financial system that is able to take into account the environmental, the social and governance data, which is unstructured data into the financial positioning of companies. One of the most interesting facts that we've seen from Morningstar, one of the leading data analytics companies and research companies in the world, is that there has been almost $6 billion that has flown into sustainable funds during this period. The question to, to us as South African companies is how do we tap into those sustainable funds? How do we influence our development impact and growth for South Africa? So let me tell you about the ESG GPS model. So we've used machine learning to build this model and artificial intelligence. And that could sound very intimidating to most people, but let me break this down into something that's very simple for us to explain what we've done. We've taken the integrated reports of companies, we've taken the laws of our land, we've taken the King Code, as well as we've taken 360 news feeds and news sites that we receive from Standard & Poor's, which we are subscribers to. And we've created a word cloud that then creates a binary, which is ones and zeros, to create 
variables that become predictive, and then using different types of logistic regressions that run through unstructured data and structured data to create a model that would be able to give you a rating of one to four, one being a very poor rating and four being a great rating. And we basically uh, use the share price as a target variable against our uh, ESG GPS rating model. Our ratings are able to tell you about the financial sustainability of a company going forward. Now let's get into the ESG component. Let's start with the environment. Climate change is a reality. So as South Africans, we were impacted by day zero in Cape Town. We were impacted by the flooding in Durban. Now another component is that we are a resource-based country and we also depend on coal-fired power stations for energy. So our corporates are impacted by climate change as well as climate change disclosure data in terms of pricing for risk based on climate change. So the environmental aspect impacts listed companies in South Africa. So the ESG GPS model has an advantage because it takes into account the fact that South African companies have to rely on coal-fired power stations for energy. And that risk needs to be factored in by banks, but also there has to be some leniency taking into account our uniqueness. Let's move to the S in the ESG. So South Africa, again, is extremely unique, and that uniqueness has been factored into our ESG model. We are still dealing with the legacies of apartheid. We have huge income disparities. We've been affected by xenophobia. So what does our ESG model do? It ensures that it takes into account the S factor, but also takes into account the uniqueness of pricing that factor for corporates that need to deal with this aspect of development impact. So the ESG GPS model has also taken into account an extremely critical factor which is also close to my heart, the inequality of women. So gender inequality plays a huge role in terms of how do we transform that factor going forward within the corporates. As I'm speaking to you now, there's only 3.3% of companies on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange that have women as chief executive officers. This is extremely important for us to transform. And our ESG GPS model actually gives you that transparency for you to be able to see the transformation of gender equality in South Africa. Let's talk about the big G, governance. This is an absolutely critical factor for any company that is listed. Normally, the G component takes into account the board structures, the size of the boards, meetings and frequencies, as well as who's sitting on the board. So the ESG GPS model takes a very holistic approach on governance. It takes into account the age, the gender, the number of times that board members meet, the quality of the board, the leadership in terms of uh, experience, and it also takes into account the REM structure. And that is extremely important in terms of the transparency as well as the growth and strategy of a company going forward. South Africa has been plagued by governance issues over this last decade. We've had state capture and we've had numerous companies fail because of governance issues. We've lost almost 700 billion to poor governance and transgressions that have taken place in the country. The ESG GPS model allows companies, as well as analysts, as well as investors, to be able to have a see-through into a company in terms of its governance structures. Extremely important. COVID-19 will give us a very good understanding of the governance practice of our existing corporates. It will shine a light on governance practices, and it will also let us know which companies are built to last. I've given you the big picture, so let me tell you about the products that Risk Insights is offering. So Risk Insights has produced three products. A classical report of an unsolicited rating, which gives you your rating of between one to four on your E, your S, and your G, as well as it compares you to your peer group within the industry that you are operating. The second product is a comprehensive report on the ESG rating of your company, as well as a full report of the entire market. The final product is a solicited rating where a corporate can come through to Risk Insights and provide information regarding the company that is not in the public domain that can either improve the rating or the rating remains the same. The ESG GPS model is critical for the new generation investor. I thank you all for listening to us today and thank you very much for taking the time.
Congratulations, Anushka, and to your team, of course, for the incredibly hard work that's gone into the development of the ESG GPS. I'm sure the insights you've just shared will change the way people and institutions think about investing and lending. Now let's get some views from a range of expert stakeholders who've seen the presentation and are keen to weigh in. First up is Arti Takurdin. She's the Chief Financial Officer of the JSE and one of the ESG GPS's key supporters. A growing number of listed companies know the importance of ESG as they are faced with sustainability concerns all the time. Now Arti, would you agree with this? And what are your personal views for South African listed companies and ESG? Over the past 15 years, the JSC has exerted great efforts in creating an enabling environment for better sustainability practices to take root in South Africa. The genesis of this relates to real sustainability challenges faced by many of our listed companies. Each sector in the listed space is exposed to ESG-related risks. More recently, with an emphasis on climate change, which has not only deepened the extent to which some very large companies are affected, it's also increased our exposure as an investment case. We're quite proud that as a consequence of these early efforts, our listed companies have evolved ESG reporting practices that are on par with the best in the world. We must acknowledge that better reporting alone is inadequate to achieve the sustainability uh, development ambitions. Our investment conviction is that sustainability integrated portfolios can provide better risk adjustment in adjusted returns to investors. Sustainability in the investment context means understanding and incorporating environmental, social and governance factors into the investment analysis and decision making. Proper measurement, tracking and reporting is of course key to this. We have seen steadily increasing demand for financial products and initiatives that prioritize transparency, good governance, and ultimately action. Now, let me bring in T.P. Njonjo. He's the CEO of the Industrial Development Corporation. Environmental impact assessment is becoming more and more critical in creating sustainable outcomes. How do environmental issues impact investing and lending decisions going forward? The operative word indeed is sustainability. It is my considered view that historically, sustainability has been equated with profitability. And I want to suggest that uh, uh, in the long run, profitable businesses, unless they embrace sound environmental, social and governance practices, could well run into sustainability problems, regardless of their profitability. In general terms, uh, sustainability I uh, understood to be being able to meet society's current needs uh, without sacrificing the future necessarily. Uh, I have a shorter definition that says perhaps uh, sustainability of enterprises talks to resilience of businesses in the long run. Uh, to be able not only to survive their risk uh, environments, but to thrive indeed and create wealth in the long run. So traditionally, uh, these issues of environmental management and practice have been treated as compliance matters. And uh, uh, the compliance department in an organization like IRAN, which is a financial service organization, would uh, check uh, compliance with regulatory laws relating to the environment. But today, I believe it is a core business imperative. And uh, a couple of examples can be made. I mean, uh, mining companies in South Africa that are not taking care of water resources run the risks of losing their social licenses to operate. I mean, in the agricultural sector already, Companies that do not meaningfully uh, take care of employees in terms of social amenities like housing and uh, um, uh, ablution blocks and facilities and uh, clean living standards, such companies are running risks of losing market access. TP, you raise a critical point, particularly during this time of climate change. Now, in light of COVID-19 and sustainable outcomes, how does the JSE view ESG ratings and its impact on compliance in general? What will be the role of the JSE on ESG going forward? Let me put that question to Valdine Reddy, the Director of Capital Markets at the JSE. 
ESG and sustainability has become a major mainstream governance uh, topic, and really it encompasses a wide range of issues such as climate change and um, other environmental risks, systemic financial stability, uh, things like worker wages, training, retraining, healthcare, retirement, supply chain, uh, labor standards, and the sustainability of the long-term model. So really, um, consumer product and safety, these are all metrics that are incorporated into ESG and would be areas where we would look to focus in terms of how do you promote um, criteria or factors that help uh, create an environment of investment that can be responsibly deployed into such investments. So the role of the JSC going forward will be to ensure that we continue to provide the most relevant tools, instruments, products and services to help issuers and investors act on their sustainability convictions. We aim to do so in an easy, credible manner and also to play our part in reorientating capital flows to more sustainable development. As mentioned, in the light of the COVID pandemic now, you would see the number of issuances that have come out um, in socially relevant product, especially and particularly social bonds and social impact bonds, sustainability bonds. And really, these have been areas um, where uh, we would also continue to uh, grow to make sure that we have the right measures available uh, to our ecosystem for deployment of investment. And really uh, also what's evident in this growing space uh, and highlighted by the current uh, environment is the asset allocation in times of concern or strain or conscientiousness, how these capital market products really matter. And so uh, really the role of the JSC ongoing would be to keep working with the ecosystem to respond in areas that matter and to respond in giving product uh, disclosure requirements, to give uh, frameworks uh, for the ecosystem to help deploy responsible investing. We also continue to be uh, best in practice and to bring best in practice knowledge sharing to the financial markets ecosystem. And as an exchange, it is um, best for us to promote integration of thinking at a strategic and uh, governance level uh, in relation to sustainability. And we really think that that type of influence and impact can move markets and can help influence um, a common co-creative practice of how to dynamically influence the space in sustainability. Now, transparency and disclosure are no longer only a statutory obligation, but they impact the sustainability of a company in terms of global reporting standards on the green environment and social issues. These include transformation and gender equality. Standing by is the CEO of WDB Investment Holdings, Faith Kanyile. What are your thoughts on how sustainability impacts investing? We invest with a uh, ESG in mind, so you can call us an impact investor. Uh, for example, we will not invest uh, in sin sectors such as uh, alcohol and cigarettes, uh, arms manufacturers, gambling and uh, high carbon emission sectors. So we will look at the company's uh, social responsibility strategy, uh, see how, for example, the company treats its communities customers and suppliers. We will consider the representation of women on the board. We'll also look at the company's procurement strategies from female-owned uh, businesses, uh, remuneration policies, healthcare, childcare policies. And then uh, on governance, we will again uh, look at the board diversity we do believe that uh, diverse boards make uh, well-informed and well-rounded decisions that take into account the interests of all um, stakeholders. Because we do believe that when companies take into account not just the financial returns, but their environmental impact and the governance factors, there is a proven research that those companies perform much, much better in the long term and are also uh, more sustainable. And from Faith Kanyile to Stephen Van Kola, the group CEO at EOH, governance is a critical component of any company and there are laws and compliance that is mandatory. Will ESG not become just another compliance burden for companies or is there real relevance to this? EOH, as you know, is a RCT company, basically a systems integrator, and does anything to do with digital for companies. And if you have a look at the fourth industrial revolution, 
digitization is fundamentally changing the landscape for corporates. Why is it doing that? Well, it's doing that because once everything gets digitized, you get access to data. Once you've got access to data, you get access to transparency. No longer can a company tell you one thing and do another thing because the reality is borne out by the data. So transparency is really, really important. And so as you get into governance and how you manage your business, this is going to be one of the key aspects of how a investor of pension fund money or asset manager money will be having a look at your business. Where a company is listed and they are using pensioners capital to grow and invest and build, there really needs to be proper corporate governance. This goes as far as segregation of duties, independence of the board. We have a great King Code for compliance framework, which I think is absolutely critical for any company to implement if they are going to accept a pensioners' funds as part of their capital structure. Is this extra level of, of governance that ESG will bring into a company, is this a burden? Personally, I don't think so. At EOH, because we did not have proper governance and proper controls, we lost a lot of money. There is a real relationship between governance and control and savings. We lost a lot of money because people were both poacher and gamekeeper. We didn't have an independent board. We didn't have segregation of duties. And this allowed people to just skip the systems and take money out of the company on an unauthorized basis. And I think if you are listed, you don't have a choice because you need to look after that cash and that investment on an independent basis and do the best thing for shareholders, not just for individuals. To all of our expert participants, thank you very much. At this point, I'd like to bring back Dr. Anushka Bogdanov to answer some of the questions that you may have raised. If we don't get to your questions, don't worry, we will get back to you personally, or you can check out our website, riskinsights.co.za, or email us info at riskinsights.co.za. First up, what makes ESG GPS different from other international rating agencies? It is bespoke to the country, so it takes into account the uniqueness of uh, the South African situation in terms of the environmental impact. And as I said earlier on in my presentation, that 95% of our energy is derived from coal-fired power stations. So we have to take that into account. And we can't just penalize corporates for the energy usage, for example. Uh, but still, we need to take into account the strategies in terms of how they will deal with carbon emissions going forward. And what, what is also unique is we take into account the laws of our land. Uh, and the laws of our land are, are very different to that of international practices. And that, that makes us very unique in terms of our model compared to the models that are out there. And lastly, uh, Andile, we do not have a one-size-fits-all. Our model is based on sector by sector, which becomes very, very uh, comprehensive because you're taking uh, different models using structured and unstructured approaches, uh, using uh, artificial intelligence to, to derive a model. Second question, why is the share price a predictive target variable? And why has Risk Insights used this instead of other financial ratios, such as EBITDA to dividend payout, or any other financial ratio? That's a very, very good question. And, and one that has uh, received a lot of contention as well internationally. So your share price is very, very much indicative of your overall health of a company. So it takes into account market value, book value, and it takes into account the EBIT number. It takes into account reputational risk, brand management. So it's very much a holistic approach. And they, therefore, you have found uh, companies uh, that have created ESG indexes, and those are based on share price movement. And uh, so we really truly believe as Risk Insights and within our ESG GPS model that the share price movement is a very good indicator of the financial health of a company going forward. Okay, let's move on. Is ESG ratings another added burden to compliance? What value does this add to the bottom line? Compliance is a huge issue and a cost burden to most companies. And uh, we've seen that even with uh, climate change data, 
where companies copy and paste, but when you're using machine learning like ourselves, we can pick up immediately where you haven't actually uh, produced information that is new or you've actually given uh, thought to your information. So the ESG GPS model uh, takes into account uh, information that is actually new and fresh for a company, but uh, it becomes a compliance burden when you, uh, you know, you are not doing something that is ensuring that your company is built to last. If you are doing something that is built to last, you do, you would not mind uh, showing off to the regulators as well as to your investors because it will ultimately uh, improve your bottom line. So they trade offs. Uh, if you, if you, so this model and ESG is not just about compliance, but it is actually to enhance your bottom line and to ensure that you are built to last but, and become a sustainable company going forward. If your new generation investor is looking at your ESG principles being taken into account in its own investment strategy. So um, it, it, it is definitely something that is extremely important and adds to the bottom line. A big concern in a modern digital world is the spread of fake news and misinformation. How does one eliminate fake news out of the ESG GPS model? That's an interesting one. Risk Insights is obviously uh, not a publishing house and we, know, we, you know, we do not have our own news feeds. So we get our data from, uh, from Standard & Poor's, which is 360 news feeds that they subscribe to and they remove the fake news and they remove anything that uh, does not make sense or has not been uh, verified and validated before it actually reaches uh, its subscriber base and we are a subscriber. And that's the only way that we can remove uh, fake news by using our algorithm to pull Standard & Poor's data into our ESG model. Thank you very much, Anushka. And that brings us to the end of our global digital launch of South Africa's first AI-developed sustainability model, the ESG GPS. This is an important development in risk management in South Africa. Of course, further details are available at our Risk Insights website. Thank you very much for joining us. You stay safe, stay home, and take care.